the glue server has completed installation, so that's good news. Now we can go back to the instructions and start the glue server. So uh, in the notes, it shows that uh, it explains that glue server is running inside of an, in a Linux installation. It's like a pre-Docker technology, and um, with that, you can start glue server and then log into glue server. But glue server is really a, a server installed in a separate directory. So with the chroot command, you'll be able to use that server as if it were a virtualized server. So um, of course, for the final installation, you need to run the setup script. So we'll log into the glue server now that it's running and run that setup script. So once we log into glue server, we can look at the path we're at slash root, but this is actually a different path on the original server, the CentOS server. So once we're logged in, we'll navigate to the folder with the setup script. This is our setup script for glue. So we will run the setup script. This is an option, uh, an explanation here about uh, the options available for the setup script. So if you run the setup script and add the dash, dash H flag, it'll show you options for running this. So I guess you could create all the parameters right here on the command line and not go through all the interactive options, but I would like to go through those options just to show them for everyone. So this is the IP address for the server. Um, this is the local internal IP address for the Amazon instance. There is a publicly accessible IP address for the EC2 instance, and that IP address is uh, routable from the outside. That's what you use to connect to it. So the address that you get is this internal private IP address, and then you can use the public IP address if you prefer. So for right now, since I've had some problems using the internal address, I'm going to use the public IP address. And the host name, I'm going to use the publicly accessible host name, or the fully qualified name actually, because it shows the host name dot compute dot Amazon AWS dot com. And then we'll enter the information here for the certificate that gets created so that we can use HTTPS. This will create a self-signed certificate. We'll use a very simple password because this is going to be not used for production purposes. And uh, should we update the host name, host, and resolve.conf files? Um, for right now, I'll say I'll say um, I'll say no because the default is no. If there's a problem, then I'll go back and change that. And then, do we want to install the OX auth, OAuth2 authorization server? So that's yes. I'll accept all the defaults here. So you can install the, the user interface for the admin console. The LDAP server, OpenDJ is the name of the LDAP server. It's open source LDAP. And then the HTTP server. And I'm not going to be using Shibboleth. And the SAML proxy, I won't be using. CAS, which is a central authentication service, I'm not going to use that. And the OAuth RP replying party, I'm going to want to set that up. And it displays all the options, and then I click yes, or press yes. After I enter yes, it's going to start the installation process, which takes a while, so we'll pause this video or stop it, and then uh, start when it's complete so you can see all the uh, output from the complete process.